So Christmas is currently 48 days away and this year I'm going to be making my entire family their Christmas gifts. And in today's video I'm going to be knitting a pair of mittens for my mom. And this is going to be my first time ever knitting a pair of mittens. So honestly I don't know how it's going to go but hopefully it goes well because I can't really afford to mess up right now considering how quickly Christmas is coming up and I have yet to make everyone their gifts still. So... Hopefully I get it on the first try, but we'll see. Also, I'll be using a free pattern that I found online to make these mittens. So I'll make sure to link the pattern down below. But uh, yeah, that's all I got for the intro. So let's start making these mittens. So obviously to make these mittens, we are going to need knitting needles and our yarn. And I will show you guys the yarn that I'm gonna be using to make these mittens. This is the yarn that I will be using. Isn't it so pretty? I chose this color because my mom really likes neutral colors. And then we're gonna need our knitting needles. And the pattern says to use 10 millimeter knitting needles, uh, specifically circular needles, but I bought double-sided needles instead. So that's what I'm gonna be using. And I bought them off of Amazon because I was having a hard time finding size 10 millimeter needles anywhere else. And I kind of needed them really quickly. And I could only find them on Amazon in bulk. So yeah, I just got a bunch of double-sided needles now, but that's fine. Anyways, we are going to open this up. Okay. This is literally all I need. So it came with five, five 10 millimeter double-sided knitting needles. Okay, so the pattern says to cast on 18 stitches. So I'm going to do that. Honestly, I have not worked with double-sided needles since I was like really, really little. And since that was so long ago, I don't really remember how to do it, but we'll figure it out. Um, let's say find the end. Oh. So the pattern just says to cast on 18 stitches and I'm going to choose to do a long tail cast on just cause I really like that cast on method cause it makes the stitches really stretchy. So let's see here, I'm just going to cast on the 18 stitches. Also the 18 stitches is for a women's size medium. Okay, so I just cast on 18 stitches onto one of my needles here. So now I'm pretty sure that I'm supposed to distribute the stitches that I have on this needle here evenly onto my three other needles. I think we're gonna see how that goes honestly I don't know how that's gonna work because I feel like all these stitches fit onto one knitting needle and I'm supposed to like put them on all on these other three as well it just feels like there's not enough stitches but I'm just gonna trust the process and so I have 18 stitches in total so I'm going to put four stitches onto two of the needles and then five stitches on the other two needles yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, I just slipped four stitches onto this needle here, and then I'm just going to slip five stitches onto my other needle. That's five. Okay, this is actually really, <laughs> this is working. Um, and then four on my third needle here. Also, I just wanna say these knitting needles are actually like really nice. I wasn't really sure if they'd be good because the price point was pretty cheap, I will say. Um, but they're really nice, really smooth. Cause some of the reviews said there was like little like notches and bumps on the knitting needles since they're made of wood and they're really cheap. Um, but so far so good, I'm really liking them. Okay, cute. <laughs> this looks so funny. I'm just like really not used to this, but this is what it's looking like. I have distributed all my stitches onto all four needles and I'm going to be working in the round like that. So now I have to connect in the round. Okay, so change of plans a little bit. I very quickly realized I was doing it wrong. I don't know why I didn't look up a video on how to knit on double pointed needles um, before attempting this. But um, anyways, I just looked up the video and realize I was doing it wrong. So I guess I have to spread out these stitches onto three different needles, not four. 
So that actually splits up evenly because I have 18 stitches. So divided by three and that comes to six stitches onto each needle. So I'm just gonna quickly do that. Okay, so now that I have it evenly distributed onto three of my needles, I guess I use my fourth needle now and I use it to join in the round. So I'm going to do that. See how that works. Okay, I'm also going to put my bobby pin here and use it as a stitch marker to remember where I started in the round in case it becomes useful later on. I'm just going to continue to attempt this and I'll come back and update you guys once I feel like I've figured it out a little bit more. Okay, so I'm happy to say that I finally figured it out and this is what it looks like up close. And honestly, I'm really enjoying knitting with these double pointed needles. Honestly, I think it's the fact that they're made of wood because I'm used to knitting with metal needles and they tend to be like a little too slippery. And I just love the feel of these. Anyways, I think I'm coming up on two inches of the cuff here. So I think that this might be my last row. Okay, so I knit a few rows and now I've reached the point of the pattern where I need to start increasing for the thumb. And this part I'm a little worried about because the pattern says make one, but I want to do make one left, make one right because I like the look of that. But I don't know if the pattern wants me to do a regular make one. Honestly, I'm still a little confused by knitting terminology because so far whenever I knit, I've just been kind of freehanding it, but it's okay. I don't think it can go that wrong. So I'm going to do my increases to make the thumb and hopefully it works out so I don't have to take out my stitches, but this is what it's looking like so far. So now I'm going to get this thumb going. Okay, I just finished knitting all of the increases for the thumb and I will show you guys what that looks like. Don't mind my little stitch marker there. I don't know if you can tell, but I did uh, right and left leaning increases and I think it worked out. Now I have to slip the seven stitches I have here for the thumb onto a stitch holder before continuing on to the rest of the rows. I am just slipping my stitches into my tiny little stitch holder. All right, that's seven stitches. And then I don't need this little stitch marker here, so I'm just gonna throw that aside. Okay, interesting. Now I think I, this part I'm a little confused about, but I think I now have to like join my mitten like, like this and then have the little thumb on the side here. But I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna wing it and hopefully it works out. Okay, so I think it was a success. And this is what she's looking like so far. Yay! I was a little worried it was gonna be like a little too big. I think it I think it might be actually a little too big. Cause like look, when I go like that, it's like there's some extra room, but you know what? Whatever. It still works. But yeah, so creating a little thumb hole was a success. That was probably what I was concerned about the most. And now I am pretty much just going to continue knitting in the round this way around like these, this part of my hand. And then I think I go back later to create the rest of the thumb, like after the rest of the mitten is complete. So yeah, I'm just going to continue knitting in the round for a while until I get to like the decrease part of the mitten.
So it's currently the next day and I'm going to be completely honest and tell you guys that I started over and we made the whole mitten in a smaller size. I just felt like the first one that I made was just like a little too, a little too big. So I decided to remake the mitten in a smaller size. So what I did is I still followed the same pattern. I just used smaller knitting needles this time. So instead of using the 10 millimeter knitting needles, I used nine millimeter knitting needles instead. So I just want to show you guys the difference between the two mittens. So this was the first mitten that I worked up yesterday while on camera. So this is what it looks like when I have it on. And like, it looks pretty good, right? But if I like stretch it like this, you can kind of tell that there's a lot of extra room. And I honestly could have made it work, but I just started overthinking it and I just, really started to feel like it was too big and I wanted it to be a little bit more of a snug fit than this. So yeah, not bad, but definitely a little too big. Also, my mom's hands are the same size as mine. So I'm using my hands as like a size guide. And I'm gonna show you guys the new mitten that I just worked up last night. And this is what it looks like so far when I put it on and you can already tell it's like more of a snug fit so still has like a little bit of extra room but not nearly as much as the first mitten that I made but I'm still catching myself overthinking it and thinking like oh my gosh should it be even smaller than this and I keep thinking like should I try remaking it again for a third time with like eight millimeter knitting needles but honestly I feel like it's fine um in my head I just I'm just overthinking it and I keep feeling like oh my god should it be like even tighter, but I don't think it needs to be. I think this is a good fit. So if anything, I think my mom's hands are like slightly bigger than mine. So I need to keep that in mind too. So I think this is good. Um, so I have reached the decrease section of the mitten. So now that we've reached like the end, this point here, we're gonna just decrease and close off the mitten and then we'll be done this one. And then I'm gonna get started on the second mitten and then finish this project because I just want to finish it now. I just finished my last row of the decreases. So in a second, I'm going to cut my yarn and weave it through my stitches to kind of close up this hole at the top here. But first, I'm just going to just going to take out this lifeline here. Thankfully, I did not end up needing to use it. And now I'm going to give myself a nice long tail, cut my yarn, use a darning needle, and I'm gonna weave it through. And you just like weave it through stitches like this and then pull and then it closes the hole. So hopefully there's no like special technique that I'm supposed to be doing. But the pattern just says to weave it through, what does it say actually? Um, through the rem stitches. Actually, I don't know what rem stitches are. I'm just gonna assume it's just these stitches. So, and I'm gonna pull it through. I just realized in case this goes wrong, I should have left the lifeline in until I was done this part. So I just weaved it through all the stitches here. Oh, that's so satisfying. I'm actually gonna turn this inside out now and uh, tie a knot like on the inside because I don't want it to show on the top here. So I'm gonna flip it inside out now. And I'm gonna tie a nice little knot here. And now I'm going to turn it inside out again, or the right way out. I don't know how to say that, but yay, look at that. It's so pretty. Oh my God. Okay, so next up, I gotta do the thumb. For a second there, I completely forgot I had to do the thumb. And I was like, oh my God, I'm done the mitten. But no, I have to do the thumb still. So I have to add these stitches onto my double-sided needles. 
Okay, that is extremely tight on my needles. Okay, so I have all my stitches for my thumb on my needles here and pattern says to just knit in the round for eight rows. So I'm gonna do that. So I guess the rest is pretty straightforward. Just eight simple knitting rows for the thumb. So I'm just gonna do that really quickly and then I'll come back once I get to the next part, which I think is just decreasing the thumb. Okay, I'm back and I have my comfy on because it's freezing in my room. I have finished knitting the thumb here and I'm gonna be honest, I already did the decrease row. It was only one row of decreasing, so it was very quick to do. So now all I have left to do is the same final step as the, like this part of the mitten here, which is cutting my yarn, but leaving it long enough to weave in and then weaving it through my stitches. I just weaved it through and now I'm just gonna pull nice and tight and then I'm going to bring my yarn inside my mitt where I will tie my knot there. But in order to do that, I've got to turn my mitt in inside out. So I'm gonna tie my knot here. Okay, so before I turn it back to the right side out, um, I am going to use this long piece of yarn here to close the hole right here at the end of the thumb. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like this pretty big hole, which I'm pretty sure is normal. The pattern literally says to um, sew this hole at the end, so I guess it's supposed to be there. Um, so I'm going to just close this hole while the mitten is still inside out. Okay, so I just finished closing the hole and weaving in all my ends. So now I'm going to turn my mitten right side out. So the mitten has been completed. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the whole thing all over again for the second mitten. Um, I'm not really gonna record that process since it's pretty much like the same thing as the first mitten. So I'm gonna do that off camera, but then I will come back to show you guys once I have both mittens completed. I am going to start making this second pair here. Okay, so I finished both the mittens and I'm gonna show you guys in three, two, one. And here are the mittens. They're both finally done. Look at these beautiful little mittens. They fit perfectly, they're super soft and cozy, and they were honestly very quick to make. Um, like when I had to restart the first mitten and start all over again, it only took me like, I think like an hour and a half to remake the first mitten. So definitely a quick project. And the free pattern that I used for these mittens was really well written and super easy to understand. So if you're a beginner and you're looking for a quick and easy beginner friendly pattern, then definitely check these out. Since it is chunky yarn, it definitely works up really quickly. But that's everything from me today. So I'm going to end this video here, but thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video. So bye.